there's a user on the kiwi farms named john uh who during the vic Mignana saga uh was a big fan of ricada pay pig ricada and tried to talk to ricada in private and during a low point of his life i'll be charitable i uh, contacted ricada and said ricada i intend to kill myself I am a loser, Ricada. I uh, cannot. Um, my my family does not love me. My girlfriend doesn't love me, and I'm going through issues, and I'm going to kill myself. And uh, apparently, Ricada tried to walk him off that ledge, my friend. And he said, "Why don't you call nine one one?" And then apparently, gave some kind of excuse like, "Oh, I don't know how to dial it. I'm just so so fucked up right now." And he said, well, why don't you go get a cab to the hospital? And he's like, well, I don't have money for it. And he said, well, how far is the hospital? He said, four miles. And he's like, well, you can walk four miles to the hospital if you really want to. And he said, no, um, I'm a loser or whatever. I'm, I'm, a, I'm like, I have issues. I have such bad anxiety. I can't walk down the street four miles. And I find this story believable because if you've ever talked to somebody who is in like a genuine, like, woe is me, Baton, Baton era. Um, people like that tend to reject or in that state of mind, tend to reject any and all advice. If you try to help somebody who doesn't want to be helped and just wants to whine, um, they will take every single thing that you say and immediately try to find reasons to undermine it or say that it's not applicable to them so that they don't have to work on changing how they feel about things. Uh, that is, that is, the, I don't know if there's a name for this mindset, but it's a thing that you definitely see. So I believe his story. Um, however, what people have taken offense over is that this guy apparently really trusted him, dumped all this, this woe is me shit on him. And then years later, for no reason other than to try and epically own the Kiwi farms, uh, decided to randomly just dox him and call him out. Um, and I don't know why. He didn't really justify this. He just smugly preened about it on on his stream. And I'll play. It's thirty minutes, so but I'll click at like random mo moments, and he's just like really fucked up, um, and being an asshole. So let's start at like the first thirty seconds, and then I'll skip ahead, and I'll just keep doing that. Some of these kiwi farmers, some of these commentators. Here we go. This is fun. Not only do I know them. Do I know their failures? Do I know their social security checks? Do I know their inability to even contact their own family for help? Do I know their desire to leave their own state? Oh, man. Oh, man. I cannot fucking imagine being in the place that this man is. So he had there's a thing that he keeps doing in this video, and I have no frame of reference to describe what it is. Besides to talk about Bossman Jack. And so I will use this as an opportunity to discuss Bossman Jack yet again. Bossman Jack smoked crack. Um, a side effect of crack is that you tend to uh, not sleep because it is a stimulant and it deprives you of sleep. A side effect of not sleeping, which is not combated by crack, is um, hallucinations. If you stay up for three plus days, uh, perhaps high on crack cocaine, you may start seeing things um, that aren't real, particularly bugs, for whatever reason. If there are bugs, you, uh, from what I understand, after three days, you start seeing bugs in the peripheral of your vision. Uh, for instance, on the ceiling. There's a very f interesting clip where Bossman Jack really freaks out. He, like, jumps and looks up at the ceiling and says, what the fuck is that? And never mind. Because he saw, like, an insect or something growing on his ceiling at the corner of his eye as a result of sleep, sleep deprivation. Ricada is doing the same thing. For whatever reason, while pontificating about how big of a loser John, John, how big of a loser John is, uh, he keeps glancing up at the ceiling as if there is some kind of tentacle monster up there that's glare glaring at him and staring him down. He has to go to a YouTube streamer to beg, beg, beg for a shred of attention. Say, please, please, Rackets. I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, man. Begging. Is embarrassing. I love you. I have my family hates me. I can't get a job. I'm so mentally handicapped. Like I, I can't do anything. And my name is John. All I want to do, I want to die. I want to put a bullet in my mouth, but I can't afford a gun. Texting me this, by the way. 
I'm like, hey, holy shit, brother, you want to kill yourself? Like, that's not good. No, I deserve to die. Well, I mean, probably, but seriously, no, that's not good. Can you buy an Uber and go to the hospital? No, I can't afford an Uber. You can't afford an Uber. Like eight bucks. You can't afford one. Why? I'm on Social Security because we use some piece of shit. But I'm so successful. Oh, man, that's fucking embarrassing. Man, that is embarrassing, right? I'm such a piece of shit. My family hates me. Nobody loves me. I'm just going to kill myself. You're messaging me. You're texting a fucking YouTuber. Holy. What is on the ceiling? Oh, my God, man, that's embarrassing. Right, John? You're texting me. And I say, I'm like, holy shit, please don't kill yourself. First of all, you can't afford the bullets. You've already expressed that. You can't afford the hardies that would kill you either. You're just you. You're just a useless pile of garbage. You can't. Oh, fuck. I fucked it up. I fucked it up in random. I, I dropped ceiling cat into the video. <laughs> That's okay. It's like two minutes in. I didn't lose it. <laughs> uh, I meant to drop it into OBS, not into the browser. Here we go. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't even change my own diapers or whatever you are, John, right? John? John. Right, John, you remember this conversation? John. I literally said, John, if you do not start walking to that hospital and ask for some help, I will call 911 because you are too incapable of saving your own life that you will call the only friend you have on this fucking earth when your family and friends have disowned you. And you're Season. sitting there. What, what, was, what was it? Was it New Mexico or Arizona? I don't remember. John, you tell me. You're sitting there in this uh, southwest state full of illegal immigrants. This state will save every person on earth except you because you're white, John. Because they expect you to save yourself. And you had no one to call except when someone who paid five bucks a month to be your friend. And then they did. Give you friendly advice all the time. They talk to you, right? Because you reached out. I know. So I'm, the other side, I, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so pathetic. So I want to kill myself that I'm going to go to the clinic. John, I have to put Nick Ricada in Minnesota. I have to put Nick Ricada of Minnesota is my emergency contact. I'm still his fucking faggot's emergency contact. Still there. Here's why. Okay, now now we're set. We're protected. <laughs> I talked this man off the ledge. Hours of time. Hours of time. Please, just don't kill yourself. Life is worth this. Life is it's like it's like he's asking for permission from Ceiling Cat. He's like, should I should I should I mention that um should I mention what should I really say this? It seems like it might be bad spirited. Yes, now say it now. Make fun of him for being a loser now. I don't care about the five dollars. I care about please don't kill yourself. At least be killed by a black. Just walk to the hospital, you useless piece of shit. All you have to do on earth is get up. Here's here's how you not suicide, guys. Let me give some fucking advice to you. You know, you not suicide. Instead of putting the gun in your mouth, you just set it down. You stand your fat ass up and you start walking towards the clinic. That's it. It's literally the only thing you need to do. I'm like, John, he's like, ah, I'm going to kill myself. I'm like, John, you can't afford a gun. You can't kill yourself. What are you going to do? Buy a Caesar salad from McDonald's and die that way? He's like, I don't even like Caesar. I'm like, unless he's in your ass. I got it. <laughs> okay, I'll freeze frame. I was waiting for the right freeze frame. The the McDonald's salad rant was a nice addition to it. <laughs> um, so there's a part. I don't I don't know if I'll be able to find it because it's a 28 minute long video. But <laughs> um, there's a part in this where he realizes, I think, just a little bit what a huge dick he sounds like. So he starts to like reframe the prior 15 minutes of unhinged ranting. And says, um, 
oh he like he's a hero he really starts talking about god like i saved the life i saved the life i told this guy even though i didn't know him i didn't even really like him i told him don't do it step back from that lead to my friend step back i saved the life like he he goes on and on about what a hero he is for for not encouraging this guy to kill himself um and but that only lasts for like a couple a minute or two so i don't know if i'll be able to find it but uh then he switches back to being a even more drunken dickhead for the remainder of it. Actually, can I? I love the honestly the best thing that YouTube has added in forever is the fucking the transcript. Save a life. Okay, this. Okay, perfect. Oh, okay. This is a great part, actually. Okay, okay, okay. How do I help you? Just help me live through the night. All right, here's a simple answer. You don't have any friends. But you also don't have any enemies. No one's coming to kill you. The only person who can kill you is you. How about you just not kill yourself and instead go to a hospital? So again, motherfucker walks to a hospital. On my recommendation, I'm like demanding, send me pictures of what you see. Maybe you know, when you see the hospital. Since there's you... two ceiling cats, maybe one of them is trying to rein him in. Like there's a good one and a bad one. And the one's trying to rein him in and the other is telling him like, no, keep keep going. You're doing great. This is awesome. <laughs> see the sign. I want you to do all these things. I want to make sure you live through the night. Because literally, if you were a cat woman. A cat? 50 cats. A cat woman. Oh, oh, he's talking about cats now. Uh-oh. The cats are you getting You laid down in your state. They would fucking shit in your mouth till you had toxoplasmosis. And then we'd eat your skin. It's so embarrassing you were a gentleman. Text me. Show me that you're getting there. Call a fucking ambulance. Finally gets to the hospital. He doesn't die. Doesn't kill himself. You know what he does instead? Goes on to Kiwi Farms. Tells him what a piece of shit I am. Holy shit. I have faith in this guy. I trusted this guy. I have faith in this guy. He's such a garbage person. And things he believes aren't true at all. And yet, he asked me to save his life. You know what he never asked me? Hey, man, are these things true? Well, no. No. You save a person's life. This is, this is quintessentially Kiwi Farms, wrapped up for all of you. As a person whose family has disowned them, will never have a significant other, whose government has disowned them, whose employers have disowned them. They sit on some internet all day, watching some person begging them to save their life. And when they do, they're appreciative for a moment until that person stops paying attention to them. And suddenly, well, they're eating 22 LRs all day. And you go, I tried to save you by just John. Okay. So um, I want to recap what he said because I have been listening. Some of you may think I've been distracted this entire time. No, that's not true. It's not true. I've been listening intently to what the wise words he has to say. Yeah. Um, his argument is that because he saved his life. I guess he assumes that this is like in Japan. Is there is it Japan that has the thing or is it is this like a fictional thing where it's like if you save someone's life, they then owe you their life and they're like your slave? Am I thinking of like a movie or something? There's some kind of movie that has a trope like that. But that's what Ricada seems to think. If he saves your life, if he tells you don't commit suicide, you therefore owe him a blood debt of his entire life. Life debt. There you go. Star Wars. That's Wookiees? Okay, yeah, he thinks John is a Wookiee. <laughs> John, you're my slave now, John. Um, and so uh, he has to stick with him through through his entire life. Uh, and he can't ever say, like, wow, he's really fallen off the wagon. Because, uh, you know, there's no way in a... There's no generous interpretation where a guy actually does feel indebted to you. And then sees your drunken, unhinged rant taking orders from invisible ceiling cats uh, that he might think, wow, I don't want to see this person who I respect and who I owe such a debt of gratitude to um, in such a, a, a miserable circumstance. There's no way that that could happen. That's ridiculous.
I'm sure your story is compelling. Have fun with that. Oh, always remember, dude, <laughs> that your story is compelling. Have fun with that. Is he? Yeah, wait. Critics of you are because the critics of you are generally embarrassing. You, know, you find this out. This is a thing you don't realize is a non streamer, a non professional online person. People who reach out to you as a normal person are normal people. The people who reach out to you as a professional need professional help often. They'll beg you to do the thing. Ask you, please, please, please save my life. And you're like, dude, I can't save your life. I can't do anything. I can barely go to a grocery store. Please save my life. And so you try. So he, um, again, he's, he's trying to say what a hero he is. But there's that one line. He, he hints at it for like a second. And now I realize what's going through his head. He, he thinks that if he just says, John... John, John's pathetic, and he tried to kill himself, and then he told me all about it. He thinks that he can personal army his critics and divert attention onto him. Like in his drunk brain, Devil Ceiling Cat has told him, uh, throw John under the bus. They will be too busy making fun of him to make fun of you anymore. And that's what he's thinking. All of the uh, Vaz deference licking they can get. Please thank you, thank you, oh my god. Like it really wasn't that expensive of whiskey, but okay. They'll do that. And then when it's gone and they can't have another sip, they go, motherfucker, you betrayed me. You betrayed me. You're like, I didn't betray shit. Like I just offered you a nice thing. Took it or you didn't took it. We'll always frame it as betrayal. You know why? Your failure stems from their inability to take accountability for who they are. Their demand to blame everybody else. So of course, they're not going to start blaming themselves when you call them out. Is there, a, is there like an ounce of fucking self-reflection in that one, buddy? Alright, let's skip ahead. There's actually, I want to show, is this the one where he shows what he was drinking? He was showing off a bottle, and it was like 120 proof whiskey? It was the highest grain or highest alcohol per volume whiskey that I had ever seen. It wasn't, even, it was more than 120. It was like 125. It was like 62 and a half percent alcohol. Uh, it was really crazy. Um, anyways, let's get to the last minute or so. Here, let's hear how he caps this, this masterpiece off. I think this is the part that I actually played on stream last time. Just the very end of it. But the entire thing is like fucking deranged down the road to the hospital because basically like watching Stephen Hawking walk. If you ever watched Stephen Hawking walk, it was really simple. He didn't. Best part. All of the chats like, this John guy is fucking weird. Um, what was that about? Hey, John. I know you'll watch it. I know you will. John. And he'll, he'll sit there and go, I literally begged a YouTube streamer to save my life because I couldn't end my own. John, buddy, you could have just hired an eight-year-old to kill you. <laughs> but you didn't. You know why? You couldn't afford the eight-year-old. John, get help, brother. Not from me. It was never from me. I was. I told you, I, I can't save you. I can't save you. You're like the only friend I have. I, I literally cannot make your life better. You're the only friend I have. I'm not your friend, John. I never was. But you do pay me five bucks a month. That's nice. I can't afford five bucks a month. Well, you're gonna. Because I want you to know, John, fake love don't last. <laughs> Embarrassment to yourself and humanity, John. All you had to do was look at yourself in the mirror and see what every other masculine. I man can't stop sees. listening. I want to stop. Look at yourself and you're like, oh, fuck. I'm way hotter than I thought, and I'm still fucking embarrassingly ugly. And then you walk away. 
John couldn't even do that. You know why? We'll figure it out. Okay, here we go. I cannot believe. You cannot oh, believe the oh guy. Oh, my God. I, I was wondering, who is that verified user in my chat? What? And then I realized it's bot tricks. And I thought, I don't have a bot in my kick chat. I have Bossman Jack's chat open still. I wonder how many of my messages have just been Bossman Ch Jack's chat <laughs> since I opened it to show RuneScape playing. <laughs>